Morning everybody, this is Phil Beck with your professional painter and decorator. We're back in this front entrance room, which you've seen probably on previous videos there. We painted that blue with the Valspar Tough Matte. Really impressed with it. Thought it was really, really good. Loved, well, I love the colour, that's why I picked it. Um, really impressed with that. But now we're on to the panel. I've come back now because we've got to crack on with this flat. We're all in the flat renovation playlist we've got to crack on with this paneling so as I've said previous videos Mike Culpit painting and decorating forum website managed to get some vouchers to pass out to fellow painters and decorators and one of the vouchers that he got as well as the tough mat and the vinyl mat that is on another video there one of the vouchers was for exterior direct to can you see it direct to wood and metal water based and it's um, satin finish. Now, I've got no jobs that's coming up that's outside that I needed this paint, but I thought this still might be ideal to use on this panelling because it's for wood and metal. If anything, it's not gonna get exposed to any exterior weather elements. So we're gonna give that a go on this panelling. Now, the color I've had mixed up is a darker version of that blue, so it complements it. And the idea is I'm gonna do this panelling and my door frames Leave the doors because they'll be on an F, another video. I'm going to keep with white on the doors. Um, but I'm going to use this blue actually on the panelling and the skirting boards. But that was provided to me by a voucher to try out. But unfortunately, I really needed an undercoat. Now, if you've got a dark blue satin, the ideal undercoats are, are grey. So a dark grey or the matching colour blue, which I couldn't do. So I've actually got, I've been and purchased this myself. Um, this is Valspar Trade uh, and it's the primer and undercoat and it's for interior and we are interior, but this will be fine as a water-based base and I've gone for the dark gray to put on this paneling and the door frames. So this cost me 30 pounds and I used my trade point discount and I got 10% um, off. So 10% off 30 quid, what's 10%? Three quid off it, so twenty-seven pound. Twenty-seven pound. So I bought that myself, but that was a, a sample. Now, what I'm going to do? I'm not going to bore you with anything now, because we really want to be seeing what this is like. I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to coat up all this area in this grey, let that dry, and then I will come back, give you my thoughts on this acrylic water-based primer and undercoat. I'll give you my thoughts on that, but I really want to be reviewing what my thoughts are on that. So I don't want to show you painting that. That's just straightforward. You see me painting it in the one, two, three. So let me crack on with that. And then we'll talk about the satin on another video. Well, it's really this video, but I've got to join it together. Got to join it together. Right, while I've got your attention, I'm just gonna give a big shout out to all the people that are giving me super thanks. There's that button below the screen. People are pressing that button. They are sending me a little bit of money, which is much appreciated. And I'll say thank you to you. I can't mention names, but those people that are doing super thanks know who you are. Big thumb up, big kiss, big heart. It's much appreciated, thank you very much. Obviously, I've got support on the channel, which is really nice. So. Um, Without further ado, I'm going to crack on with this and we will um, see you later on in this video which will just be a blend from one screen moving to another when we start getting on with the blue. I'm going to get on with the dark grey. Cheerio. Hello everybody, we're back. Last time you saw me I was telling you I was going to be undercoating all this in the dark grey Valspar Trade acrylic water-based undercoat primer. So I've done that, gave it one coat over that white base, well, one, two, three, that we used, one, two, three plus. And now we're going to give it a coat of, I know you're gonna laugh at me, it's the exterior. I know it's all that I was given, but exterior, and it's direct to wood and metal, and it's a satin finish. Now, this is gonna be a dark blue, and if you want to know what color it is, I'll read the label, it's called Billions and billions, that's the colour, the Valspar colour, billions and billions. Right, 
I've told you I'm using it inside. I can't see that there'll be a problem me using it inside because we're not going to get the weather. It's not going to rain on it. And unfortunately, I didn't get a voucher for any interior satin. So I'm going to use this in this area. Now, if you were using this outside, there's no mention of an undercoat. So this is literally, as it says on the kit, on the tin, and it's direct to wood and metal. It does say on the back, if you're putting it onto um, bare metals, three coats, but normally two coats should be enough. So fingers crossed, me putting an undercoat on, mainly because we were going over a white, the gray will be a cracking undercoat for the dark blue. Now, let me just check on the back of the can. Um, recoat time, two to four hours. I'll get a coat on it, then come back another day to give a second coat. I'm under no illusions, this area in here might be needing a third coat because it'll get damaged by the time we get all the trades coming in and out, but I know that. Um, formulation water base, so you can wash your brushes out with water. Um, I don't think there's anything else to uh, make you aware of. So hopefully this should go on a treat. It should go on a treat. It says shower proof in 30 minutes if you're outside, direct to rust amazing should be fine on mdf quick drying we like that and it i mean to be fair it does sound the front no primer would i'll say it again put my teeth in no primer required um yeah you know, again there's the water base symbol so hopefully i'll have no problems putting this on i won't show you uh won't talk through painting it all i'm going to be doing is making it quite simple i'm going to paint the centre panels and then bring the styles and the rails all the way along. Nothing complicated about it. I'll see how I go with this first coat. If I feel like I want to get a little two fussy, two fussy blokes roller on it at another stage, second coat, I might do. But for now, I'm just going to brush it. These textured walls are textured because of the mass orange peel that we had when it was originally built by the contractors. Um, so other than that, I think this is straightforward, don't you? Yeah, I haven't nibbed down that grey because I don't want to break through back to white. Once I get that darker blue on, I'll give it a light nib because it was nibbed down prior to the grey going on. So um, let, me, let me crack on and let's see what this colour's like. What do you think of that? I have to say that didn't go on too bad. It pulled slightly and that will be mainly because that grey undercoat is a dry finish. Um, on the whole, no problems. I could do with a bit bigger brush, but I'll grin and bear it. I don't want to get a roller out for the for this time. I'll, I'll try it. I'm just keeping with that two inch arrow worthy. Um, but no, quite, quite like that. The application was quite nice. Undercoat wise, if you wanted to know what that went on like, I mixed it up in the tin and I would I would say it felt, it felt very thin. It applied nicely, um, didn't have any problems going over that one, two, three. Yeah, it was probably a thinnish paint. There wasn't much body to it for thickness. It was as if somebody had thinned it, but it went on fine. I'd expect a little bit of grinning going over that white. So no problems with that undercoat. This has gone over that undercoat nicely. I think by the time we actually get the second coat going on, because we're going over itself, because eggshells, satin woods are all self undercoating really, particularly when they were oil based. Um, a second coat of that will be lovely. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna crack on, I'm gonna carry on with all these panels, and then I'm gonna come back to these well, filling rails. And then I'll cut in across the top against the, um, the blue, the tough mat, the Valspar Trade tough mat. So all in all, quite happy. Um, see you later on. So, I've got it all coated up. I've got to say, I got held up by about three quarters of an hour 
because um, the tiler came and he wanted to measure up the bathroom for tiles. So having a natter to him, it held me up a little bit. Not that it's his fault. Right, what do I think of this? Um, I think this is really an outside paint. <sighs> Chosen specialised subject, the bleeding obvious. It says exterior on it. I have to say, I've had windows open, the Veluxes are just above my head there. When it started to rain, and I'm inside, so I had to shut the Veluxes. I had to shut the Veluxes, it was spotting. Do you know what? The smell, I could actually smell that paint. I can't actually tell you that there's a smell to the paint when you sniff the tin, but in a close environment like I've got in here, the air went a little bit potent. And if I say I feel a bit headachey, yeah, I feel a bit headachey. There's something in that paint that is obviously geared up for being an outside paint and not an inside paint. I'm using it as an inside paint, one, to try it, and two, because I haven't got an inside paint to try. It feels very nice and it dries within half an hour. Now, is that because it's got this special thing in it that makes it stink that if you use it inside, I'm not sure. But it is one of these paints that goes direct to rust. So there's definitely something in that to make it, I don't want to say an MSP, a multi-surface paint, but it's geared up for outside and I've well, pushed the boundaries slightly by using it inside, but it allows me to see what this paint's like to feel. And application wise, it went on really nice. Obviously, I'll say obviously, not everybody will know, it, it's not gonna cover straight away for one. Fingers crossed it goes for two. The wall, the Valspar Trade tough mat, went lovely over white. Yeah, you'll, you'll see that on another video. It went lovely over white for one coat and two coats. It was, it was beautiful. So I'm expecting this to go on a lot better for the second coat. Second coat, do you know what? I'm gonna drop onto a roller, mainly to speed the application up. We've got texture on these panels anyway from previously when it's been um, rolled before. So I'm gonna drop onto a roller. The skirting's there, you can see. Um, I'll paint with the brush, because obviously you won't get a, uh, a roller in low enough without touching the carpet. And the other thing you're probably noticing, I made an executive decision. I didn't ring my wife. I thought, I didn't like the, I didn't like the look of a white door in this room. And the more I got round this room with this dark blue, I quite like the coziness, if that makes sense. Am I a follower or a leader? Do you know what I mean? Better to be a leader than a follower. So my lead is, I've painted, oh, lights come on. <laughs> I've painted that door and it blends quite nicely. The same with that door. I went over the one, two, three with that, so I didn't put um, a gray brown. I didn't put a, a gray undercoat on it. Since it can go over anything, I thought, well, one, two, three is gonna be fine. So I have actually given that a coat. When I come back to it, might be tomorrow, might be day after, I'll let it all harden off. I'll give it a second coat and um, we'll see how we go. I'll probably even use a roller on that as well. But all in all, I don't think it's too bad. It'd be lovely for somebody to comment and say that they've used it outside and think it's really good because so far, I'm quite liking it. And I'm loving the colour. I'm loving this room at the moment. Just look, just look at that. It's different. I'm not saying I feel like I'm walking into a pub, but you know what I mean? It's got a, a cosy, homely feel. Right, I'll see you on the next video where I put a second coat on. You won't see me putting the second coat on. I'll do what I've done before. I'll second coat it, and then we'll just give a conclusion of what it looks like and round it up. We'll keep these sorts of videos back 20 minutes. So um, let it fade out, and we'll go on to the next one, which will be the next day in a few days. But yeah, you, you're getting the idea now. Cheery bye. Welcome back. Did you like how it fades from a few days ago to now? And if by magic, the shopkeeper appeared. You remember that, Mr. Ben? Who can remember Mr. Ben? Comments. Right, it's been a good couple of days since um, you saw me last. 
Now, I know the video just blends in. It all blends in. But I said to come back, I won't show you painting it again. I got on with it today and it's been, it's been done and it's dry. So I thought I can just give my quick sum up review of what I thought of this paint. Not bad. Right, first things first. I said what I said, I did what I said I was gonna do. I've actually done all this now, the dark blue. I've used, um, Two Fussy Blokes, 5mm Microfiber Roller, that's the one with the red end. I've just cut in, top edge, across there, the underside, just there, and then cut around the moulding, well, moulding, the edge, with an inch and a half Arrowworthy slash cut. Did the skirtings with the brush, but the rest of it I rolled. Now, if you're looking, I'm just jumping about a bit, I'm like a kangaroo at the minute, if you're looking at painting this sort of panelling all the way around, and even the door, I did the door, I did the telly was doing the door, a roller is your best friend because the finish that I've got on this is near, a f I don't want to say it's a spray finish, but it's as near a spray finish without spraying it. Does that make sense? Of course it makes sense. It's, it's a nice finish with that. So really pleased with that. Let's use my, um, Wooster Pelican, you've probably seen this on the video if you've watched the playlist of A Place in the Sun. But all the stuff's there. Let's just come a bit closer. I'm with friends. I know this paint wasn't an interior paint. It was an exterior paint, but it's what I'd got and I wanted to try it. I wanted to use it. What do I think? I think the stuff stinks when you're in a closed environment. Now, if you're of the age, not so much if you're of the age, if you're, of, if you're a decorator that used Sickens XD, which is the best oil gloss you will probably find of any brand. I'll put my hand up and say, I think it's the best one out there. If you've used Sickens XD exterior oil gloss, and tried to use it inside, what was it like? Because I've done that, and it's a cracking gloss, it's brilliant inside, it takes a bit longer to dry, but you know what, it stinks, it stinks the house out. Now this being water-based, I'm not quite on the level of it stinking the house out, but when I was in this closed environment, without the windows open, I could feel it. My face was going red, I felt a bit woozy. I'm exaggerating now, but I could tell. And I'm, I'm somebody who's actually used to the smell of paint. And if you're a decorator or you've done a lot of work with cellulose paints and spray stuff, you probably say you get used to it. Like if you worked in an abattoir, you'd get used to the smell of an abattoir or a butcher's. My granddad was a butcher. I flipping hate the smell of butchers. You know what? I was never gonna be a butcher. I like eating burgers, sausages, meat. <laughs> I digress. But this is an exterior paint. When I came back to it today to just give it a fine nib down, the actual feel of this surface felt a bit gritty. Now, I don't want to say it was the paint that's gritty. I'm not sure. If you've used this and you've got the same sort of finish, feels a bit gritty, tell me. I wondered whether it was the grey undercoat that I'd used prior that wanted a nib down, which I didn't do because I was going to nib down after the first coat of this. But I'm not sure whether this being an exterior paint lacks the quality you'd get if you were using an interior paint. I'm not sure. I'd have to try it outside and see if it gives you that feeling of a, a dry, not saying that like there's a bag of sand in it, but it just felt a bit of a gritty, rough surface. Now, the actual surface felt solid, it felt hard, and that's what I wanted on this, because it's gonna be a high traffic area, and if anything, this is gonna be brilliant. It dries quickly, which is good, and actually applying it with the brush first coat wasn't bad. Doing it the second coat with the brush and the roller, even better. I, I flew around this lot. I would say the finish is quite nice. It is a proper satin finish. 
it's not a flatter egg shell it's got a I'm looking looking across here it has got a little bit of a sheen to it more of a satin and if I look at the door that's behind me or like that door there but I've got one behind me there I can see a sheen not a shine but a sheen to it for it being a proper satin finish but all in all do you know what I need to try this outside because this is something that goes over rust metal without any primer I mean it says no primer needed I primed this because I was using a blue over whites so I primed it with grey it covered lovely for two coats I did the doors I didn't bother using the grey primer I kept with that one two three which was white do you know what two coats it's covered so I'd expect a dark colour to cover but I would also say there's certain paint brands that a dark colour would still need three coats so all in all this isn't a bad paint if you've got garden stuff to do that's metal if you've got um, uh, an ornamental or oh, grass roller and you're wanting to paint it with something give it a go I'm impressed with it I'm coming back to the fact that being in the trade would I go to B&Q would I go to a DIY outlet to buy this even though it's been really good would I look for an alternative at Brewers, at Paintwell, in Dulux, in Crown, in Jono's? Would I look for an equivalent at the trade outlets where I've got the accounts that we've got? I know I get a 10% discount at B&Q because I've got the trade point card, which is great. I said in the last video about using the Tough Mat, do I sit? A bit on the fence of being uncomfortable about going to buy my paint for a job from B&Q and on that note I'm hoping some videos are there but I will say this is very good if you are looking for a paint for outside use give it a go and the videos are there thanks for watching see you on the next one